Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of News Dose where we give you all of the latest news in the game industry. And we have a big episode ahead of us as news has been rolling today. We got more information on the Xbox Series X and that's always a lot of fun to talk about. And we finally have an official announcement for an Animal Crossing Direct. It may have been a month later than anybody expected it would be, but you know, at least it is happening. Plus, we have another acquisition, and that almost seems like a common thing in the game industry right now, as it does seem we are going through a bit of a consolidation. Platinum Games also has a major announcement coming soon. Some Biomutant information, Super Smash Bros., and more, so don't go anywhere if you want to hear about all of those. Let's start off the episode with Xbox Series X though because according to a GDC description for an upcoming presentation on March 18th that the next generation Xboxes aka Xbox Series X and the Lockhart will have dedicated audio hardware acceleration which is a pretty fancy name. Though what this essentially boils down to is having better spatial sound through a special accelerated processor which should speed up how sound is received meaning that you should be able to pinpoint specific sounds and locations with a more accurate and realistic representation that you would hear in real life. This is a very welcome addition to the next generation consoles and probably one of the more undercommunicated aspects for next generation. Most people will either talk about the power of each console or what games they will have, but the audio is incredibly important as well, whether that be the music, the sound effects, or even the dialogue. It's absolutely paramount to give an immersive audio experience to get the best possible game you can. I don't think people even realize this sometimes and how sound can be so powerful in how games are conveyed and the immersion it creates through the mood and atmosphere. So to see an upgrade on audio is really good news, especially for you audiophiles out there. Don't be fooled though, because this is important far beyond just audiophiles and should benefit the regular user as well. We also have to remember that the PlayStation 5 themselves will also be upgrading their audio, which was reported on last year that the PlayStation 5 will have hardware assisted 3D audio. Now, I don't know if this is any different than what the Xbox One S is using as it has Dolby 3D audio itself, but I do assume it is a step above that. But either way, it's really good to hear that both the Xbox and the PlayStation 5 will be upgrading their audio solutions for next generation. I'd be very interested in hearing it for myself. And speaking of next generation, I've been seeing a rumor over some leaked PlayStation 5 specs in the last few days floating around claiming that the PlayStation 5 is more powerful than the Xbox Series X from 4chan out of all places and I mean, and I just want to say there is a reason I've not talked about that on this channel and that's because it has absolutely no credibility whatsoever. Quite frankly, I'm shocked to see so many outlets and fans pick up this rumor and are trying to run with it. I mean, I think it shows just how starved people are for PlayStation 5 news right now, but I do want to caution you from picking up on these clickbaity headlines that are popping up on news websites about the PlayStation 5 specs. As of this moment, and this hasn't changed at all, we are still just as much in the dark as we were last week about the PlayStation 5. The only credible information that we have to go on about the PlayStation 5 right now is from those AMD leaks that popped up a couple months ago, and even that we don't really have context on what those leaked AMD tests were for on the PlayStation 5. So let's just wait and see what happens, but I will tell you this. If that 4chan rumor was even remotely true, which it isn't, it's just another fabricated leak from an anonymous user who can make up anything that they want, but let's just hypothetically say it was. Well then Sony would not be in a wait and see mode with the Xbox Series X's price right now as they would be a lot more confident on setting a price. That's all I'm going to say on the subject though. Moving on to the Nintendo portion of news now, yes we finally got an Animal Crossing Direct announcement. This may not be the big Nintendo Direct that many fans have been waiting for, but Animal Crossing is a pretty big franchise so we did all assume that there would be a dedicated Animal Crossing Direct at some point. Well, the wait is almost over as it will be going up tomorrow morning on February 20th, 9am Eastern Time or 6am Pacific Standard Time. 
This direct will be roughly 25 minutes long for Animal Crossing New Horizon, which will be releasing just one month later on March 20th. And I know there has been a lot of questions surrounding Animal Crossing New Horizon, especially with the save system and how many accounts you can have and so on and so forth, so hopefully everybody's questions gets answered in the stream tomorrow, which I think that it will be. Nintendo does a good job with their directs, I think that it will cover a wide base of questions here. We also have some Super Smash Bros. news as director Sakurai in Famitsu Magazine has confirmed that the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighter Pass 2 will be the last bit of DLC for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I don't really think that this should come as a major surprise considering I don't think most people even thought we were going to get a Fighter Pass 2, but it has now been confirmed from Sakurai himself that Smash Ultimate will be wrapped up with this final Fighter Pass. This is no small feature though as the Fighter Pass 2 is not expected to end until the end of 2021 so you should expect a lot of Smash news over the next couple years. And on that subject Sakurai did say that they have not started any kind of planning for a sequel to Smash Ultimate and he will also not be working on any other game during this time. In other words Sakurai's complete devotion will be on Smash Ultimate for the next couple years. This will of course involve making 6 new fighters, but you also need to keep in mind that online fighting games needs to constantly be worked on as patches is a pretty regular thing to keep the cast as balanced as it possibly can. Considering Smash Ultimate has the largest cast of fighting characters in one game, that is a lot to reign over. Either way, the next 2 years for Smash fans should be a lot of fun. I'm curious as to who some of these fighters could be though, I'm hoping for Rayman personally. But, you know, I want to hear what your thoughts are on the Fighter Pass 2. Who's some characters that you would like to see in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in Season Pass 2? In other news, we have another game studio acquisition by none other than THQ Nordic. I mean, honestly, this should come as no surprise whatsoever as they continue to gobble up studios left and right. I know fans tend to talk a lot about Xbox, PlayStation, or even Google acquisitions, but I don't think that there is any publisher who has made more acquisitions than THQ Nordic over the last couple of years. This time though they have acquired Saber Interactive for a whopping $525 million which is crazy ridiculously high. To put that into perspective, Sony acquired Insomniac for $229 million and they are one of the most talented studios in the entire industry. Granted, they don't really have their own IP, but you could say similar things about Saber Interactive. Saber Interactive has really become one of the best studios to port games over to the Nintendo Switch recently, being behind games such as The Witcher 3 and Vampire. I don't really think this will change though, and I do think that's important to note because I have seen some Nintendo fans kind of worried about this, but I ask you, why would Saber Interactive suddenly stop porting games to the Switch? They do a good job at this and they're also making easy money off of it. I actually think that this is one reason THQ Nordic acquired Saber Interactive and I think we will continue to see Switch support from them. I do think it's interesting in how many studios THQ Nordic has acquired though. I wonder what their plans are going forward. Are they just acquiring talent to have a bigger portfolio or is there more to these acquisitions than we realize? Are they going to come out with their own PC storefront or streaming service? I mean, we've seen other publishers do this type of thing, so could they do that? I mean, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but they really have been gobbling up a lot of studios lately. And speaking of THQ Nordic, do you remember that game Biomutant? Well, it's a game I've been keeping an eye out for a quite a long time. I, I mean, I love the design and art style of this game. It's got this gritty, realistic look to it, but your mutated creatures. It also looks like it will be a lot of fun, but I mean, this was announced way back in 2017, and I think fans kind of expected to see it released by now. Unfortunately, the game just went silent to the point fans started wondering if Biomutant maybe got cancelled. Well, the developers Experiment 101 has now confirmed there is nothing to worry about and that Biomutant is in the final stages of development, but there is still no set release date as of this moment or at least until they are confident that they can hit the release date. And this is something I didn't know, but I've been hearing that Experiment 101 is a pretty small studio and when I look at this game, nothing about it seems small. 
Biomutant looks gorgeous and is probably why we are seeing them take a little longer than expected to bring this game out. It does make sense though as THQ Nordic as a publisher really seems to focus on double A games but I'm really excited to hear more about Biomutant and I'm hoping it turns out as good as it looks which I think it I mean again I think it looks fantastic. Now this next topic we'll be talking about Platinum games and really we've been talking a lot about them recently. They just posted a very successful Kickstarter for Wonderful 101. Hideki Kamiya wants to make a Wonderful 101 sequel. And then also they have that teaser website out there where they will be revealing four new mysterious games with their new money which was invested in them by Tencent. Of course, the first was Wonderful 101, but now it looks like we will get our next announcement next week revealed by Famitsu Magazine. I have no idea as to what it could possibly be. I know a few games Platinum wants to work on, but wanting to do something and actually doing it is two completely separate things. Nonetheless, I do know that Platinum wants to make a sequel to Astral Chain, which I would love to see. They said that a sequel would largely depend on if the first was successful, which it sounds like it was, as they have reached 1 million in sales for the Nintendo Switch. Platinum Games has also went on record saying that they would love to work on Scalebound if the opportunity was there, but I find that one to be very doubtful as Microsoft owns the IP of Scalebound and I'm not sure they would want to return to Scalebound after sinking a ton of money into it earlier this generation. It could also be Bayonetta or Babylon Fall related. We do need to remember that they are working on those games so there is a lot of possibilities here. It could even be a new IP, but that's why I'm going to ask you, what would you like to see Platinum Games announce? Myself, I want another Nier game. I mean, Nier Automata is actually one of my favorite games this generation, so I would be thrilled if we hear about another Nier game. Now for the last bit of news, I want to talk about two different PlayStation pieces, the first of which is about Media Molecule's Dreams. I'm sure you may have seen several different games created within Dreams throughout the last couple of days and people have been making some pretty cool stuff honestly. But in an interview with Media Molecule, they were asked if they would be interested in Dreams being used in education to create games and the response was pretty interesting as Media Molecule said that they have already been approached by educators and universities. The reason as to why is because it's just so easy to create games within Dreams so it can help students learn how to make small games. I mean, I don't think it'll be as beneficial as learning something like Unity or Unreal Engine, but it does go to show you how impressive Dreams is as a creator tool. Now this next bit of news is pretty interesting as well because a new patent for PlayStation VR revealed how they are looking into finger tracking. The thing is, this is not really anything new and we actually have seen several patents by this point that has indicated the next generation of PlayStation VR will have finger tracking, but rather that this patent shows how it would work which looks like it will be very similar to how Oculus does it with the Oculus Rift S. See it actually is done with a controller itself and has sensors to detect movement with your fingers. This would allow you to do things like point your index finger to press a virtual button inside the game. It just adds an added depth to the immersive experience in the VR world, which is always a good thing to hear. Plus, this also means that they would be ditching the current PlayStation Move controllers, which are quite dated to be completely honest, so that's really good to hear. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.